Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds, and welcome to another episode of Ask the Cheese Man. This is episode 170. Uh, this show is where you can ask your home cheese making questions. Uh, lovely to see everybody. I'm, for want of inter introduction, I'm Gavin Weber, and uh, I'll be running the show today. And in the chat, there will be a moderator, and the moderator is Kim Weber. She should be there somewhere. There she is. Yes, <laughs> she is. There is there is Kim. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in the world. So lovely to see everybody. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. I had my mobile phone on silent, so that's good. So I don't get to disturb myself. Um, but a uh, big thank you to new YouTube members, Jack Brawson. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate your financial support. Daniel D'Angelo, thank you, Daniel. New patrons over on Patreon, Denise uh, Nabba Rezeni. I think that Rezeni, yeah, that's how you say it. Thank you, Denise, appreciate it. Uh, John H., thank you, John. And Noah Norton, thank you, Noah, for your financial support. Uh, if you want to support the show financially uh, to keep the uh, lights on, uh, there are links in the description below on YouTube. Uh, we are live today on uh, YouTube and Facebook. The Facebook page to go to if you're not already subscribed, uh, if you prefer that over the over face uh, over YouTube, uh, is uh, Cheese Man TV, and you can go and find that. Okay, uh, lots of people on the chat. Fantastic to see everybody. Um, let's say good day to a few people. First, cab off the rank, Jim Jackson. Thank you, Jim. Uh, appreciate it. I think we had Martin there from uh, Scotland uh, very, very early over on YouTube. Uh, I think Roddy's there as well. G'day, Roddy. Uh, Kim, of course. We've got uh, Michelle. No, Michael Stowers. G'day, Michael. Uh, Marcel. G'day, Marcel. All the way. Stayed awake this time. I know it's pretty early in uh, Cape Town. Patricia, lovely to see you. Who else have we got? Um, uh, St Stigen? I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry, mate. Appreciate it. Appreciate you turning up. Russ, g'day, Russ. Matthew, Julia. Uh, who else have we got? Cease, g'day, Cease. Uh, Anna, hello, Anna. Uh, we got Alistair, g'day, Alistair. My mouse seemed to be playing funny, but what's going on? We got Lindsay, Lindsay, Annette. Uh, Matthew Manel, g'day Manel, appreciate you turning up as always. Uh, Dan, g'day Dan, red pilled girl, um, Stissy, I think that's how you say it. Uh, where else we got? We got uh, Michelle Monique, g'day Monique, Herb, g'day Herb, lovely to see you. The Belgian Swede, g'day mate, how are you? Um, who else we got? Derek. Lots of questions, Stephen, William, and obviously Kim, who's moderating, which we've already seen. Okay, um, videos this week are going to be uh, Colby. Oh, that's in production at the moment. Uh, I've finished it. It's vac packed. It's in the cheese fridge. It's being turned every week. Um, so there'll be a new 2021 version of Colby hitting your screens very soon. Um, uh, just for information, the bland is still fermenting. It's going a lot slower now. So I think it's been about two weeks now it's been fermenting. Uh, it has gone a lot lighter in colour, as in all of the dark honey colour has, has gone. Uh, so it's a lot lighter now. So it kind of looks, it looks very milky. So don't know if that's good or bad. Hopefully that's okay. I'm hoping it will clear. Uh, that may take a couple of months, but we'll see how that goes. For those who haven't seen the video, I released it this week, uh, and that is Bland, B-L-A-A-N-D, which is a fermented whey drink. 
Very cool. Um, let's have a look uh, at questions. Uh, uh, before I do, a couple more shout outs. I think we've got some more people there. Um, we got uh, Mark, g'day, mate. We've got Shara, g'day, Shara. Uh, we've got Kevin. Uh, it's Dutch. It's Stein. Stein or Sheep Hero. Nice. G'day, Stein. Um, and Zach and Fabian. Okay. All right, Lee. Let's, uh, let's do some questions, shall we? What's the time? Five minutes past. Um, got a few people on, that's for sure, which is fantastic. Let's have a look. What's the first question? Okay, let's have a look. There's got to be one here somewhere. Oh, here we are. First question's from Lindsay. Lindsay says, good morning, Gavin and Kim. I have a raw milk Stilton on day three of daily flipping at the moment and an Appenzella on day four prior to the Brevi Bacterians, uh, Brevi Bacteria Linens wash. I'm going to use... Homemade apple brandy. That'll be perfect. The apple brandy would be spot on for Appenzella. Um, so well done, Lindsay. Thank you very much, mate. Um, Matthew says, can I do a Comte uh, making video? It's on my list of ones to do. I do have a recipe for it. Um, I've never tried it for real because I think it's fairly fresh in, um, in France. So I will check it out. Have a look, see if I can find it. Um, more of a statement. This one's from Dan saying, hello from Montreal. Uh, making form on bear whilst watching today. Well, best of luck. Mine turned out okay. Wasn't as good as I thought it would be, but the recipe certainly is sound. Uh, it was just my lack of um, affinage that kind of did that for that one. But it was very nice. Okay. Um <laughs> Uh, Martin says, uh, hi, Gavin and Kim, hope all is well. I'm dealing with a frisky sage derby tonight, so we'll need to catch this later. Uh, thanks as ever, and hi to Hamish. Uh, thanks, Martin. Um, yeah, watch the replay. Thank you very much. Uh, now, don't forget the, um, the Ask the Cheese Man gallery will be at 8.30. I've got my little alarm set, so hopefully that'll all work out well. And uh, we've got some lovely pictures today, which is fantastic. Belgian Swede asks, uh, good day. Other than the louder moulds, do you know of any other moulds that don't require cheesecloth? Uh, yeah, I suppose. So when you're making, you know, the soft cheeses and stuff, I'm not sure if this is kind of the question you asked. So things like the camembert moulds, anything really soft with really large moist curd, they don't need a cheesecloth. It's only when you press cheeses that the cheesecloth kind of holds the curds intact. If you try and press a semi-hard or hard cheese um, in a mould with a follower without a cheesecloth and it hasn't got those micro perforated um, holes like the louder moulds do, the commercial ones, then you're going to get cheese coming out and you're going to get these little nubbins things coming out. Very interesting, but... Yeah, that's the only way I can think of. I, I, I don't know of any other commercial sort of moulds that um, are like the louder ones. Okay. Um, this one's from Derek, and Derek says, I made your brie recipe and had a very hard time flipping it. Uh, also didn't have any penicillium moulds, so scrape some off a store-bought brie. Do you think that'll work? Uh, two things there. Um, uh, the reason... Yeah, the breeze are hard to flip. What they do in um, commercial operations is have these plastic mats and they put one top and bottom and then they flip it that way. Uh, that's uh, And they've got a lot of space. It's very hard with a home cheese maker. If you find it cracking, it's crumbly. That means the acid, it's too, the pH is too low uh, and it's gone to that crumbly stage. Uh, if anybody watched um, Dietrich or the, uh, what, what do you call himself? Dr. Casero. Um, last week he explained all about pH, very technical, which was fantastic. Um, but if you missed pH and crumbliness of cheese, then go back and have a look at last week's Ask the Cheese Man. Um, penicillium candidum 
off a store-bought brie doesn't grow as well as, say, uh, Penicillium Roke 40. So you may or may not get a mould covering on your cheese. Uh, it's better just to add it to the milk, <clears throat> as in the um, uh, Penicillium Candidum uh, direct fat inoculated uh, powder. So you may have some issues, Derek. All righty. Um, next question is from uh, Maka. Maka says, um, hi, Gavin. I keep getting coliform infections in my cheese. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Any suggestions? Um, well, the, the most obvious suggestion is to pasteurize your milk. Uh, if you're using the only reason you normally get uh, coliform, which is a, uh, it's a fungus bacteria, it's a yeast um, in your cheese is if you are using raw milk. Um, so pasteurize it. Kim, if you can put up the link to the um, low temperature, long hold pasteurization for home cheese makers, uh, that video, and that'll explain it to uh, Maka. Hopefully that'll work out for you. Okay, a um, little bit of a promo. Uh, Shara, who's over on Facebook at the moment, uh, she uh, runs a Facebook group called Learn to Make Cheese. If you are not already subscribed to that, pop over there um, and uh, sign up. All cheese makers are welcome. I think it's nearly at 20,000 uh, followers now. And uh, uh, most days I pop in there and answer a question or two. and. Uh, yeah, it's great fun, uh, and it's a very good group. It's one of those groups that are very rare on Facebook. There's no bitchiness. Everybody is polite. Um, there's no um, oh, there's no spam, all that sort of thing. It's a fantastic, well done. Uh, it's a great group, um, and um, uh, well done to Shara and to uh, Tracy who, who run the group. Okay, Kevin says that, Gav, the provolone is drying out after two weeks. Should I oil or vac pack? Um, I give it a light oiling, Kevin, and if if you can't keep the humidity up and it's starting to crack, then probably is best to vac pack it. Uh, you'll get a better outcome on your cheese anyway. Okay. Um, a question from Zachary says, how much plastic do you think is in Kraft American cheese? Ooh, I don't know. I've never tested it. Uh, besides the plastic wrapper on the outside for, the say, the Kraft singles, but uh, no, I don't know. Um, a question from Michelle. Uh, got the yogurt maker. Instead of powder culture, how much skier do you add? Um, if you're trying to reculture, remember that skier has got um, a yeah, rennet in it as well. Um, that won't affect your curd set, but it does have um, the lactic bacteria in it already. So two tablespoons to a litre of milk, uh, and you should be good to go. Don't forget you've got to add rennet to that to make a proper skier. Okay. Um, and Kim popped up the link for the bland, which is fantastic. Thank you, Kim. Um, Wendy, I didn't see her before. G'day, Wendy. Lovely to see you. Um, uh, for those who don't know, uh, Kevin's just said, just to let you know that Ian Trower is now at Lakeside Dairy, about 60 kilometres north of Edmonton. Uh, and those who don't know Ian, he was one of the very first or second people I interviewed on the podcast, uh, Little Green Cheese. Uh, podcast and he's a homemaker home cheese maker that went fully professional and now he's a uh, fully fledged award-winning um, cheese maker in um, Edmonton uh, so yeah absolutely fantastic and he makes some fantastic cheese if you haven't checked him out um, go and find his um, he has a a, a a blog called uh, much to do about cheese so very cool all righty. Um, question from William. William says, have I ever done Cotia? 
Uh, yes, and Kim has put the link there. So well done, Kim, uh, to the video. So um, here's a question from um, Stein. Says, I have a bland question. I used Sol... Saltpeter, isn't that what you make gunpowder out of? Uh, in raw milk to make gouda, is the way usable for bland? Um, not sure. Uh, I've only ever made bland once, and it was just uh, just a whey with uh, no salt added to it or anything like that. So, um, no, not sure. Uh, sorry, Stein, can't answer that one. Um, uh, here's a question from Annette. says, a friend of mine has requested making a cheddar infused with sweet chilli jam. Do you think that would work? At what stage would the chilli be infused? Uh, don't know about the jam part, but certainly you can put chilli flakes into your cheddar. You add the um, chilli flakes that have been boiled for about 15 minutes to rehydrate and to kill any pathogens. Uh, I would add that during the milling process when you're adding the salt. That's the best time. I wouldn't add a jam. Uh, too many variables. Um, certainly, it's got sugar in it and sugar and cheese kind of don't mix unless you uh, make just a normal cheddar and then crumble it up and then put the chili jam through it and then repress it. That's the only way. That's what com most commercial operations do. When you see things in cheese, uh, if they're uh, a sweet sort of thing, because the sugar will ferment, and that's not a good thing. Anyway, I hope that helped, Annette. Um, uh, Stein says, uh, try uh, Cadova moulds. They use a net, no cloth needed. Oh, great. Thank you. Good information. Thanks, Stein. Uh, Michael says, um, hi, my fatter went slimy and broke apart in the brine. What did I do wrong? Uh, normally it'll be a pH imbalance. Uh, the brine has to have the addition of some calcium chloride. Uh, it should be about a 10% brine. Uh, and there's some recipes. If you go to the making real Greek feta video, Kim, if you can pop the link up to that, that'd be great. Um, uh, then, uh, yeah, uh, it's got to have a little bit of vinegar as well. And the, uh, the, uh, brine has to be balanced. Uh, I think the acidity should be about, I think it's five, five. Yeah, a pH of five. Uh, and uh, you will find then that uh, your cheese doesn't go slimy at all. So remember, those two essential ingredients are uh, calcium chloride and, uh, and a little bit of white vinegar as well. The, the recipe's uh, certainly there. That's what happens when you get slimy cheese in brine. Um, uh, here's a question. Can you make your decal on last long lasting hot cold tumblers? Mm, I think that's a merch question, maybe, Michelle. Um, I think there are, well, let me think on Teespring where I do all my merch. Uh, there are cups, obviously, like this one. You do certified curdner. I think there are water bottles. I don't think there are thermoses. So, no, I'll have to have a check. I'll check, Michelle. Um, Kevin says, uh, have you heard of a mother culture box that you can make your own mother culture from a direct set culture? If so, do you sell them? Uh, no, we don't sell them. Uh, and have I heard of them? Uh, not per se. There's some instructions in Ricky Carroll's book, um, Home Cheese Making. Uh, there are some instructions on how to make a mother culture, but typically those sort of cultures are not sold as DVI or direct VAT inoculated. They're actually sold as a mother culture and you actually, there are instructions usually on the packet how to make them up with a little bit of milk or whey uh, and then you freeze the uh, mother culture into blocks and you add them to your milk, let them defrost and then start heating the milk up. So, no, I don't have this mother culture box. I'll have to go and investigate. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. Um, 
Uh, there's a statement from Patricia says, Mark, I got coliform infections from putting cheese molds in the dishwasher. No problems with coliform since I started using star sand to sanitize molds after washing before making cheese. It was a great tip. Thanks, Patricia. Um, there's a question from, um, I can't read the name. No L? I think that Noel. <laughs> uh, Gab, what's your opinion uh, on adding veggie oil to the milk in the cheese making process? Uh, definitely not. It doesn't set a very good curd at all. Um, yeah, where are we? There's a question from Dan, but I think it's not complete. I'll have to guess. Hey, Gab, is it normal for the Penicillium Rogue 42 something? <laughs> Let's see if there is a, oh, here we are. Here's the question. Isn't a better one? Uh, is it normal for the penicillin rogue four to remain on top of the milk after stirring them in? Looks like a lot of black specks on top. Uh, yeah, sometimes. If they're not rehydrated properly, uh, then that can happen. If, if you've got uh, a powder that does that, uh, a penicillin rogue 40 powder, just uh, a little bit of water um, before you make the cheese, and just put the powder in the water, so like a quarter of a cup of water, like I do for all, some of the other ingredients. Stir it in, let it rehydrate for about 20 to 30 minutes, and you'll find that when, then when you add that to the milk, uh, it doesn't float. Um, it's just, it doesn't rehydrate properly sometimes. There is a liquid form of um, uh, Penicillium Roke 40, which we sell. It's under, uh, it's a vegan Penicillium Roke 40. It's only because it's not made on a uh, lactose substrate. Uh, or grown on a lactose substrate. So, uh, yeah, you could do that. Okay. Um, all righty. Next question is uh, from Asma. Asma says, how to keep blue cheese and other non-blue non in a cave? Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, so you use ripening boxes. Uh, you would have seen, uh, let me see, do I have a picture? of something like that let me just dig it up she's making equipment and i'll show this on the screen in a second two sex if i can find that here we are all right let's make that big let's share the screen uh if i can find the button yes that one rightio so sharing the screen so you can see there that uh, there's a ripening box. This is what I use to separate blues and all sorts of other stuff. I'll just hide your comment there so we can see the picture. Um, it is uh, just a, uh, a plastic Tupperware type box. It's got a mat in the bottom. And you can see there, there's the mat there. And that sits elevated off of the floor. It's got a little pop top button so you can regulate some humidity. But yeah, it's a great little product. Um, we certainly use it um oh well, i use it for all my cheeses so yeah it's a it's a great little tool so um let me just kill that so i can see that there we go all right so that's what i use so i put if i do a blue i put them in that and if uh, everything else if it's not waxed or vacuum packed then if i'm trying to make a cheese with a natural mo uh, rind then i'll pop it into the um into the ripe pardon me into another ripening box Okay, I um, hope that helps. Um, uh, there's a question from Manuel. Do you think that if I use to make cheese expert geotrichum candidum? Uh, <laughs> not, not sure of the question, but I think what you're trying to say is, should I use geotrichum candidum with other cheeses? Uh, definitely. Um, so if you're making a, um, a bloomy white mould cheese mantle, like a camembert or a brie or something like that, then a little bit, tiny little bit of uh, geotriton candidum is beneficial. It prevents uh, what's known as rind slip uh, if you use just penicillium candidum by itself. It's also fantastic if you're making a, a washed rind cheese, so one with uh, brevibacterial linens. It helps prepare prepare the surface of the cheese and uh, brings the pH up to, you know, neutral, um, which brevibacterial linens likes. It doesn't like a really acidic cheese. 
uh, surface of the cheese. So a little bit of uh, geotrichum candidum will help both those styles of cheese. Okay. Um, uh, Michelle says, will I be filming another cheese festival when everything opens up? Uh, definitely. If we go to a cheese festival, I'll certainly be filming it. Don't you worry about that. But uh, yeah, it's, we've got to wait until we get vaccinations and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and hopefully it's not too crowded like the last one was. Uh, Asma says, can I use MA4000 uh, or Flora Danica for Sherv? Um, uh, it's best to use the Flora Danica. So an aromatic mesophilic culture is better than the MA4000. The MA4000 series has uh, a thermophilic culture in it as well as one of the um, the, the cultures. I think it's uh, Streptococcus thermophilus. And uh, yeah, it wouldn't make a very good sherv, sure, but it'd actually make it too firm. So use Laura Danica for your soft cheeses. Okay. Um, Stein says saltpeter is a nitric acid or sodium nitrate, I think maybe you're trying to say. Uh, no, I definitely would not use that way. Uh, it would kill all of the uh, the yeast, I would think. Um, next question is... Uh, this one is uh, from Paul. G'day, Paul. Um, hi, Gavin. I have a few different mesophilic cultures in the freezer. How much different... How much does different mesophilic cultures like C101, MA11 make in the end flavor any tips before i make leodama uh next week um so two questions so uh there is a uh, a video that i did about different cultures and stuff so kim if you can put up a link to the different starter cultures and what they're used for <clears throat> that will help paul um as far as just check the bacteria strains, uh, C101 by New England Cheese Making Supplies is just a basic, it's very similar to MO30 uh, or MA or MM100, I think. MA11, I'm not sure. I think that's only got one of those two cultures in it. So you're going to have to check that out. Um, any tips before I make Leodama? No, just make sure it goes through its uh, hot phase. Uh, to create the eyes and it should be fine. Don't vacuum pack it. Find the eyes don't develop as well as they should do. There's <clears throat> um, a question. Um, Alastair says, um, could you sterilize unconventional ingredients like jams in a pressure canner and put them in during milling stage? Um, problem with adding things to cheese is that if they're uh, sugary like uh, jams, they tend to ferment. You'll get yeasts and stuff. I, I do realise that, you know, things are sterilised when they're in a pressure canner because there's a different temperature. It's about 112 Celsius, which kills off most, most pathogens. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, it's, it's not that... It's, it's not worthwhile adding in uh, ingredients during the milling star, uh, stage if they're runny, gooey, that sort of stuff. If they're dry ingredients like herbs and spices, then usually you don't have too many troubles at all. I certainly haven't in my experience. I know when I have put, um, uh, I haven't used jam per se, but I know the sugar will ferment. It's just not a good thing. Okay, it's best to put them in afterwards. Like I said, um, remill it at the end and then put those things in and, pr and then just um, uh, press them again. Um, there's a question from Stephen says, do you just use your wax one time per cheese? Uh, certainly not. Um, I reuse the wax over and over again. In fact, I've probably still got the same one kilogram of wax that I used Originally, what I do is when I peel the wax off a cheese after I've used it, if it's got any cheesy residue on it, I just soak it in hot water and then give it a brush with a soft brush. Uh, not hot water, warm water. Sorry, hot water will make it melt. Um, oh, and that's the alarm for the gallery. Uh, we'll do that in a sec. 
but um yeah so <clears throat> the uh the wax uh gets these cheesy bits on it i brush those off make sure it's dry then put it back in my wax pot which has a plastic lid on it and um i just use it again next time just make sure that when you're um heating your wax up you get to over 75 degrees celsius and that'll kill off any pathogens that may be on the wax or yeasts or molds or what have you and you have no troubles whatsoever okay um so the gallery it's the gallery time let me just put up there should be some music to this but there's not let me just get rid of the question Sorry, Stephen. Uh, okay, so the first uh, photograph is from Adrian Jones, better known as California Jones. I don't know if he's online today, but uh, thank you very much, Adrian. Uh, this is his buttermilk blue, and I tell you what, there's some fantastic uh, uh, veining of Penicillium Rogue 40 development there. Uh, I think it looks like he has scraped the outside of the cheese, but it looks very nice indeed. Okay, the next cheese is a uh, mozzarella that he's done, uh, and that looks absolutely fantastic as well. Well done, Adrian. Next cheese is also from Adrian, and this is a, a recipe from Mary Carlin's book, uh, Artisan Cheese Making Home. It's a, it's called a, a parv. Um, it had another name, I think. I can't remember, a golden parv or something like that. Anyway, it's... Um, a nice looking cheese. I don't think it gets pressed per se. It's normally in a bag and then it's pressed or some weight put on top. So, uh, yeah, very interesting little cheese. I do have the recipe for that, so it might be interesting to give it a try. Uh, this one's from Cease, and I think she's in the chat today. Uh, so Cease has made a Stilton, uh, and she said uh, that uh, looks can be deceiving, so don't worry too much about the rind. When you have a look inside like that, uh, the she says the Stilton was absolutely fantastic. Uh, very creamy, rich, and lovely blue flavor all the way through. So well done, Cease. Okay. This one's from uh, Mark uh, Wakelin. And he's made a queso fresco, and he's used... Um, uh, he said he used milk that was... Uh, expiring that day so it is best to use a fresher milk and he said it caused because it was a little bit more acidic i would think it's caused a bit of a, a crumbly cheese remember queso fresco is eaten the same day or the next day he's added to it uh sun-dried tomatoes and szechuan pepper uh which is a if anybody's ever had kung pao chicken i don't know if you have but from a real szechuan restaurant uh, they add this pepper in called Szechuan pepper, and it num numbs the tongue. It's a fantastic feeling in your mouth. It's quite strange, but um, yeah, let's let's see. Can we make that a bit bigger? Let's have a look uh, without losing clarity. There we go. So you can see the little flakes of Szechuan pepper uh, through it and the sun-dried tomatoes, and he reckons it tastes really, really good. So well done to you, Mark. Uh, I think he's got another picture. Here we are. This one, I'll make this one a bit bigger too. This one is a uh, Tome de Savoie, uh, and it's got a lot of white mold on it. He says that it tastes really good, but he thinks he would make it a lot flatter next time. Now, never having had, I've never had any experience with um, uh, Tome de Savoie. So, uh, yeah, so uh, well done, uh, Mark, and it looks like a nice cheese now. Is there any more? There is another one. This one's from Patricia, who I think is in the chat as well, and she's made a stout cheddar. Uh, there was a bit of a spiel, but I've lost the email. Um, uh, Patricia, if you're in the chat, you could uh, say what she did to the cheese. She used a... Um, uh, oh, the yeah, the beer was called Cereal Killer. <laughs> uh, get it? Yeah, it's made from malt. Very good. Uh, and the, she says the flavor is outstanding. A little bit of marbling there, which is typical of the stout cheddar, unless you really, really soak them and keep the curds really warm for about an hour, then they tend to go a little bit darker. But nice flavor, she uh, said. And uh, yeah, well done. All right, that's it. That's the end of the gallery. Thank you, everybody, for sending in your pictures. Hang on, go back to me. Uh, thank you, everybody, for sending in your pictures. Um, if you want to send a picture, you can go to, let me show you how to do it. Let me show you, uh, where is it? 
Gav, figure it out. You can do it. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go find Gavin on YouTube. Here we go. So um, I'm not logged in on this page. Here we, there we go. So yeah, okay, got it. Right. So go to the channel page, and here on the About tab, uh, you will see down here it says for business inquiries down here uh, it says sign in to see the email address if you're not signed in you won't see it if you are signed in there'll be a little uh, capture that you have to tick saying i'm not a robot and the email address is there for you to send your photographs to the um to the gallery so you can do that go to the channel page and uh and that's where the email address is so great variety of cheeses today. Well done, everybody. Really appreciate it. Okay, uh, and thank you so much for sending them in. Okay, um, let's have a look. There's a question from uh, Patricia again. Would you sanitize dried fruit berries before adding to cheese? Uh, if yes, do you prefer dried heat or boiling and why? Okay, so uh, good question. Thanks, Patricia. You always come up with the good ones. Uh, yeah, oh, look, I do sanitise dried fruit and um, and berries, so things like cranberries and stuff like that. Uh, I've never added sultanas or raisins or anything like that to the cheese. Uh, certainly dried chilies and other spices, anything dried like that. I do prefer to... Um, I, I prefer to boil them in about half a cup of water... Uh, and what I actually do is I'll strain them off and keep those aside uh, when they're rehydrated. One, it kills off any pathogens, yeasts or whatever. Two, you've got some flavoured water now that you can add to the milk at the start of the cheese making process. Uh, and that actually gives a lot more flavour, especially like um, uh, things like, oh, especially chilies. You get a chilli kick there as well. Peppercorn, same sort of thing. I actually have added peppercorns in dry. I've also added into a jalapeno cheddar that I had uh, raw chili, but I did find that uh, it, I matured it for more than, uh, so I ate it at three months just to check. It was a farmhouse cheddar. I added live, uh, uh, sorry, raw chili to it, uh, green chilies. But I found that after six months, it started to rot and give an off smell. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't so good. So there, yeah, that's the reasons why and why I do that. But you get a bit more flavour with the water as well. Uh, okay, another question. This one's from Daniel, and Daniel says some recipes say you should cut curds to quite specific sizes. What difference on the result of the cheese would it make if the curds were cut smaller or bigger? Okay, so when you cut the curds uh, to different sizes, so the smaller you cut it, the less whey is retained and you get a harder, firmer cheese and drier cheese. If you cut the curds larger, you'll get more whey retention and you'll get a moister cheese. That's the difference in cutting curds. Okay, um, so here's a question from H12, I think it says. Um, I'm a really big fan of your channel and hope one day to make my cheese. What's the easiest one to start with? I think Kim may have already put the link up saying um oh no maybe not the beginners cheeses if you haven't honey can you put them up please uh and that'll help out uh, h12 um here's a good question from noel uh is it safe to use the same cheese cave to cure salami which have mold as well uh if you want your cheese to be covered in it's usually penicillin penicillium uh, candidum or a penicillin, uh, what's the other one for it? Um, a penicillin Camberti, that's a separate strain, but very similar white mould. Um, yeah, if you want them covered in white mould, then yeah, go ahead and cure your salamis and cheese in the same cave. Um, if you don't have salamis in your salami curer, um, it's probably the ideal place for it if you can get rid of the mould beforehand, of course. Um, but, uh, yeah, the two don't kind of mix together. Okay. Um, oh, Charlie's online. G'day, Charlie. Lovely to see you, mate. Um, Charlie lives just down the road and is an avid cheesemaker. He loves making cheese. Um, 
here's a question from uh, Drina. says, you help me with a slimy feta uh, cheese issue with a strong salt brine recipe a few months ago, which worked a treat, however. Um, thank you. However, will feta cheese still work with a very weak salt brine? I have to massively limit my salt intake now due to illness. Um, Drina, you can go down to as little as a 10% brine solution. So um, as long as you've got the calcium chloride and the vinegar in there to regulate the acidity, then you shouldn't have too many problems. The feta won't be as salty. If you find that your feta is too salty, then soak it in milk for a few hours, a couple of hours, two hours maybe, and uh, you will find that the salt leaches out of it. So hopefully that helps. Okay. Um, <laughs> a non-cheese question. Uh, question for Kim. What soap kit do you recommend to start with? Just getting back into soap. It depends on the soap, the type of soap uh, you want to make. Um, I'll get Kim to um, uh, answer that separately. She kind of has, but uh, she can jump on Facebook and give you an answer. Uh, so... Um, Let's have a look. Um, da -da -da -da. Uh, Manuel says, uh, can I add boiling fruits in the cheese like jalapeno cheddar? Uh, yes, you can. So do those. So make sure they're rehydrated and boiled and you shouldn't have too many problems with that. Um, uh, Gil Herm says, um, Mr. Weber, what's your favourite cheese? And sorry if I got your name wrong. Um, my favourite cheese. They're all my favourite cheeses. I love all the cheeses. That's my standard response. Uh, okay. So, okay, let's have a look. Um, uh, Derek said, I think he asked a question before about his brie. He said, I just checked the brie I made with your recipe, but didn't have penicillium candidum. So I used some scraped off at Sorbort one and it's working. Covered in mould already after five days, yay. Well done. I didn't think it would work as well, but if you've got a complete covering, then well done. Okay. Uh, okay, let's have a look. There's another question here. Um, There's got to be a question here. Am I at the bottom? I'm at the bottom. Um, here we go. What's the best? Right. So this one's from Michael. Says, what's the best starter cheese? Um, Kim's put a link down there for you, which says um, uh, it's a beginner's cheese list with no cheese cave. So you don't need a cheese cave to make those cheeses, which is uh, perfect. Um, got a, a super chat there from. Uh, and this is from Burham, I think that's how you say it. Yeah, uh, yeah Bur Burham, thank you so much for those. Um, oh, I better turn the light off before anybody gets too excited. Um, do you have your own spin on uh, Ostkaka? Kaka? On Ost I don't have it. I'll look up the cheese and have a look, though. Um, but no, I don't have that cheese. Let me just uh, just do a quick googly, see what it looks like. Alrighty, uh, this is a Swedish cheesecake with strawberries. Swedish cheesecake? No, I haven't. Uh, means cheesecake, oast, kaka. <laughs> there you go. Um, so no, I don't have a twist on that. I actually did make a cheesecake. Um, Kim, can you put the link up to the Cheesecake I made with the French cream cheese, please. The video for that. Um, but thank you so much for your kind super chat. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, uh, next question is from uh, Michelle again. When making cheese, which requires certain molds, etc., do you think you can put the link where we can get get the same ones you have? Uh, yes, indeed, Kim. If you can put the link. Oh, I might already have it myself. Hang on, let me just uh, have a quick look. Oops. 
Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. All the molds. I do have the link when it works. Here we go. All right. So all the cheese baskets that we have in stock, I'll just pop the link into. Uh, let me see. Let, let me do it. There we go. So uh, that should have gone to YouTube and Facebook. So there's the link to the um, the cheese baskets. And, uh, yeah, that's all the ones that we have in stock. Um, so, yeah, you can check that out. Uh, did that work on YouTube? Yes, it sent it there. Fantastic. All righty. Thank you for your question, Michelle. Let's get rid of that one. And uh, George has a question. says, I was making your little bears and didn't get a clean break after 90 minutes. After three hours... It sort of got there, but how long before you decide it's not viable? Um, how long? Yeah, good question. Uh, look, I just keep going uh, until you get a clean break, basically. Uh, there's obviously something wrong somewhere, uh, either with the milk or if it's even... Uh, look, after three hours and you haven't got a firm curd, then that's a bit of a problem, obviously. Uh, if it's still sloppy, you're never going to get it into the molds at all. So, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Um, but look, I, I have waited personally up to five hours. So, uh, yeah, uh, great question. Thank you, George. Uh, got a super chat, and this one's from uh, Stephen. And Stephen says, uh, thanks again for your reply. I'll definitely, definitely reuse my wax. Always look forward to Saturday afternoons. Are stout infused cheeses solely for cheddar type cheeses? Um, uh, firstly, thank you for the super chat, Stephen. Uh, yes, those styles of cheeses, whether it be it's the cheddar ones that have the chunky bits of curd that when you press them together, you get those lines around them. So that's kind of what you're trying to do is uh, is get that. Mar it's like a marbling effect. Um, plus the flavour absorbs better during the um, cheddaring process when you've got all your cubes cut up, ready to press. Uh, only problem is with those stout sort of cheddars is you've got to keep the curds warm or they won't infuse when you press them. You've got to give them a lot of pressure. Um, look, you probably do it with some other cheeses, but I, you wouldn't get the same effect. If you did it with a farmhouse cheddar, remember farmhouse cheddar curds are very small, um, and that would be a bit of a problem, so... Um, at, you'll probably get too much of the flavour and not enough cheese, if that makes sense. Anyway, but thanks for your super chat, um, Stephen. All right, here's a question from uh, Dan again. Is it working? Why is that not? Right, here we go. Dan says, my Yalesburg uh, wax cracked during the warming phase. Some, uh, it leaks away. I've revealed the wax right away. Was it okay to do this? Um, revealed, resealed? The wax? Uh, yes, it is okay to do that. In fact, that's what you should do. Um, yes, yeah, so, and they will crack. They they expand. Um, so yeah, the wax is on there just to protect it from mould. You will find that by the time it cracks, the rind is very uh, fairly elastic and you won't have too many problems with mould growth per se. But, yeah, wax it, re-wax that bit again and you should be fine. Uh, and it sounds like that's what you've done, Dan. Okay, Tanya has asked, um, hi, Gavin, what can cause a cheese to collapse after coming out of the press? Ooh, okay. Um, I've had one go from a lovely shape to a Frisbee. Uh, too much moisture in the curd, definitely would do it. Um, rarely do I see that with a press cheese. Um, either the pressure wasn't enough, which I'm kind of thinking that it isn't, Um I've only seen it with, uh, say, camemberts and stuff like that when I haven't kept them in the mould long enough and haven't flipped them enough uh, or I cut the process short or don't go long enough because there's just too much whey in the in the uh, curds and they won't retain their shape. Uh, that's when I've seen cheeses collapse. Um, so what I do is I just remill them and put them back in their moulds again and uh, let them drain again. However, I've never seen it with a pressed cheese. so. I think you might not have been pressing hard enough, Tanya. Uh, got another super chat there, which 
hasn't come up on my screen, but I will turn the curd nerd light off unless um, I'm not sure what's going on there. Anyway, um, it just went off randomly unless somebody's hacked the hacked the matrix. Um, all righty. Uh, there's a question from... Oh, no, there's one about store-bought milk. Um, Kim, it's from Marker. Kim's already put the link up there, Marker, if you want to have a look in the chat on YouTube, and then you should have that. Um, Patricia says, Gavin, have you considered selling the pyramid-shaped moulds? I'll see if I can get my hands on them. I, my suppliers at the moment don't have them. Um, but I will uh, investigate because I want to make some cheeses with those little pyramid moulds myself. That would be very cute. Um, uh, there's a question from Derek says, I want to try a thermophilic cheese today. What's your favorite one to make? Um, favorite quick one is, um, uh, bell paese. So go and check out Kim. If you can find the recipe for the bell paese, that would be fantastic. It actually entirely matures in the kitchen fridge at four degrees Celsius. So great little cheese. Don't have to wait very long at all. Um, Okay, um, have I, this one's from John, says, have you ever used your cheese skills to freestyle a cheese uh, for which you had no recipe? If so, what were the best and worst results? Uh, good question. Um, yes, yeah, so if you have a look at uh, the Petite Blue is a cheese that I developed myself. I just winged it. Uh, and it turned out quite well. Lucky I wrote the recipe down. Uh, another one that I've, uh, I don't know if I, it, there are other cheeses out there that look like it, but uh, Bloomy Goat Blue is another one that looks, that I created just from scratch, wrote a recipe down off the top of my head and see what would happen. And that turned out very nice as well. Uh, there's another cheese that I made called Lazarus's Cabin. Uh, which was supposed to be cottage cheese, but I had to press it. <laughs> and that turned out very well as well. I, that, I was trying to make something else and it turned into a nice pressed cheese. Uh, so, yeah, that was really good. Um, but great question. Thank you very much, John. Um, next question. A lot of people saying where they are from in Canada. Nice one. Um, so we've kind of run out of questions and we've got eight minutes to go. Uh, unless I've missed some, I don't think I have. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we can call the show short unless um, there's a question here from... Uh, to all the Canadians, where are we buying supplies within Canada? Um, I do know of one shop. It's called Glengarry Cheese Making that makes... that sells supplies there in Canada. We ship to Canada very quickly, actually. Um, so a lot of, we've had a lot of Canadians buy stuff from our store. We do ship all the way there. So, um, if you're looking for supplies and you want to get them from Australia, then, uh, check out littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Um, here's a question from, uh, Michelle says, will you be doing a history cheese making tour or tasting? Uh, not sure what you're talking about there, Michelle, but I would love to go to, Lots of little artisan cheese making dairies here in Victoria. In fact, I was planning it for 2020, but obviously that didn't happen due to COVID. Uh, but once it all, uh, uh, everybody's vaccinated and the virus kind of dies a slow death like it does um, when everybody gets vaccinated, then um, yeah, I'd love to go around Victoria and go to different cheese makers. So, uh, so that would be good. Um, yeah. So anyway, thank you very much. Um, uh, here's a question from KX. White spots on cheddar under backpack. Is that normal? Uh, it means there's a little bit too mo much moisture usually in the, um, uh, in the cheese under the vacuum pack. White spots probably won't be mold because mold needs oxygen to grow. Um, but the white spots will definitely be too much moisture or moisture on that spot uh, on the cheese. Uh, Honey says, uh, are there are any cheeses cheaper to make at home? Um, 
Uh, most are, actually. Uh, if you take into consideration the total cost of ownership, uh, especially if you live in a place like Australia uh, and it's hard to get international cheeses. In fact, I just paid $60 for a kilogram of a cheese from uh, Utter Delights. It's a, it's a truffle-infused brie. Uh, it's a one-kilogram wheel, which I should be getting this week sometime. But I paid $60. Now, I could make that for half the price, um, depending on where I can get truffle powder from. But, um, yeah, you, you definitely can make cheeses a lot cheaper at home. Uh, okay. Um, so Herber says, um, uh, so they opened up the international shipping from AU again. Sweet. Yeah, we're actually a shipping herb to um, a few countries, New Zealand, USA, Canada, uh, Turkey, um, Singapore, Malaysia. Uh, and these are just countries that Australia Post can ship um, International Express. We're only shipping International Express. The price will be a bit higher, um, uh, the shipping cost, uh, but it will get there a lot quicker and it shouldn't get lost because um, there's full tracking uh, and signature on uh, on delivery as well. So, uh, yeah, so we haven't had any lost parcels so far to those few countries that we have, but you can check out the full list in the checkout in the little country drop-down bar or in the cart where you can go to the shipping estimator uh, and you'll see. But uh, I know, Herb, you're in the US somewhere, so, yeah, no problems at all. You can buy stuff. A um, few minutes to go, three minutes to go. Kim's already given me the wind-up, so we'll finish it there. Um, thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, Kim's put up the merch link and she's also put up the supporter link, uh, over at Patreon. Uh, you can check out patreon.com slash Green and Gavin. That's my supporter link. Uh, if you want to support the show financially and don't forget the merch, uh, you go to cheesemantv.creator-spring.com. Bit, uh, convoluted but it's certainly there and i think the little man is coming in we've got hamish of course here we go there he is dirty dog whoa careful little fella don't get to... he's not a puppy anymore look at the size of him <laughs> anyway, say hello hamish there we go that was kinder but yeah look at the camera it's up just just there anyway thank you everybody appreciate all your questions as always um uh, without your questions, there wouldn't be a show. And Hamish wouldn't get his puppy food, honestly. And I'll put him down. Here we go. There you go. See you, Hamish. Um, but, yeah, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week, as always. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching the show. See you later.